morning everyone, day 53, and we're leaving Vermilion Valley Resort. You can see it's a nice, brisk, chilly morning. Uh, we're taking a boat back to the trail, something unique. This is uh, Edison Lake right now, and the water level is very, very, very low. You can see the dam here. quite a large dam. Apparently it's one of the largest earthen dams in California, so there's that. But there's a bit of mist on the water. The sun is out. It's going to be a beautiful day. Believe it or not, there was a little bit of snow last night or yesterday afternoon for some people coming down from the high mountain. Uh, we, we didn't get it. We just got the clouds. We're speeding up right now, so you're probably not going to hear me too well, so I will say have a great day. Bye. After leaving Vermilion Valley, it was going to be another pass. This one uh, was called Silver Pass, and everything was frozen. The trail was frozen. It was slippery, it was uh, a little bit dangerous, the cro creek crossings were icy and dangerous and uh, I didn't realize how high this particular pass would be. Though Silver Pass wasn't dramatic like all the others we've had so far, it was still challenging and it still got your heart rate going. It's hard to imagine how quickly the temperature changes here and you know, one minute it's just beautiful perfect weather and the next it's cold and freezing and and uh, it's just something that you have to deal with. Along the trail I came across another little creature and it was the same type of creature that uh, chewed a hole through my tent uh, way back at, uh, where was that, uh, Spanish Needle Creek. Um, this little guy is called a pica and you couldn't find a cuter creature ever anywhere. It was so gorgeous. Um, definitely had a lot of personality. So I got closer to the Mammoth Lakes area. I was coming across lakes that uh, that were all, all part of my history, uh, Virginia Lake and Purple Lake, and this is where it was an easy three-day hike from Mammoth to go and spend a day there and then come back. It felt good to be coming back into some familiar territory. We camped at uh, Purple Lake that night, and it was cold. I had to have another fire going, and. Uh, there wasn't uh, a whole lot of room and we literally just dropped down another 10 feet so we could have a fire because anything over 10,000 feet you're not allowed to. But we just dropped down to the, the safe zone. and today we'll be rocking into Mammoth and after that it's only going to be two more days for me and this odyssey will be over for now it has been cold like real cold um, excuse me last night water bottles froze um, I don't know what else to say except Glad the sun's out. I'm glad I'm moving because if you stand still, you'll lock up. I'm going through a forest right now. I'm looking forward to seeing the minarets soon. They're not too far off. Just seeing uh, Lake Virginia and Purple Lake was pretty extraordinary. I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed that we camped 
right next to Purple Lake last night. I had a nice campfire. Only the second one that we've had. Um, but we needed it last night because it was cold. And last night I wore everything to bed. I was cozy and warm. My tent was great. But in the morning everything was frozen. The inside the tent was frozen from condensation. Uh, yeah, anyways. Today's a short day, we're only doing 13 miles. That should get us to Red's Meadow, to the bus, to get us into Mammoth. Or we'll hang out for a few days and see some friends, eat some good food, have a few drinks, a couple shots of tequila. Life is good. Hope you guys are all doing well. Tere, Santana, Jacob, Nora, Sienna. I miss you guys so much. It's not gonna be too long now. And I'll be talking to you this evening. Bye. Today I hit the 900 mile milestone, which was great. And uh, for the most part, the trek into Red's Meadow was going to be mostly downhill, very cruisy. And I kept anticipating seeing some familiar mountain ranges. And it wasn't long before I could spot the backside of Mammoth, and it's an area that I was so familiar with for my, my five years living there, but I was seeing it from a different point of view that I'd never seen before, away from a distance and on the back side of the mountain. And seeing the minarets for the first time from this vantage point brought back a little bit of nostalgia for me, and nostalgia isn't really something that I do, but for some reason this, uh, this kind of warmed me up. As I got nearer to Red's Meadow, I began to see the forest that had been decimated uh, years before. I never realized how close this actually came to taking out Mammoth, but uh, the fire had stopped on the opposite side of the mountain. There's nothing like an ice cold beer when you get to a place to resupply, and Red's Meadow had plenty of that. Mammoth is a spiritual home for me. It's where I had left and moved to when I was 17 during a very difficult time. And it was there where I formed some of the closest friendships that I've had and continue to have uh, more than 40 years later. And we're back on trail after that nasty little COVID incident. We still don't know where we got that. We think being in the high Sierras and isolated, it wouldn't happen, but it did. Nevertheless, here we are at the very famous uh, Devil's Post Pile, quite an iconic uh, geological event that created this. There's a few places in the world like this, but th this one is uh, just really spectacular. Um, there happens to be one in Australia in a place called Fingal, but that's right on the ocean. It's a little bit different, but similar kind of formation. This uh, hexagon lava tubes. It's really, it, it's quite extraordinary. So, we're back on trail. We've got uh, today, tomorrow, and then an early morning walk out into Tuolumne. Uh, weather's great today. Hopefully it'll stay this way. We're supposed to get some rain. Let's see what happens. Anyways, it's good to be back on trail with my buddy Mark. He's feeling better. Hopefully, uh, we'll smash this in. Anyhow, have a great day, great night, or whatever you are. We'll see you soon. Leaving Red's Meadow once again meant more climbing. A good part of the uh, afternoon was a solid climb. Some real steady, slow, nothing too steep, but just steady, trying to get back up into some of the, the higher regions. Looking back on Mammoth as I pulled further away, I'm looking at it at a different perspective, one I'd never really seen before, and it just made me appreciate what a beautiful mountain it, it was. Great mountain to ski. And it's hard to fathom, but there are people that actually head out in the wintertime to ski some of these backcountry mountains. And even in the summertime, it's, it's a lot of effort to get to some of these places, but in the wintertime, I can't even imagine it. 
Found a nice little spot to camp that night at a place called Badger Lake. Not many people around, not too many places to camp. Aside from the clouds and mosquitoes, it certainly was a beautiful little place. actually day 56 yesterday I missed missed up as yesterday was day 55 today's 56 and the last day last full day I'll have an early walk out tomorrow into Tuolumne mainly because I can't camp there got to camp four miles out or four miles past but anyhow it's such a beautiful day today look at that this is San Joaquin River and we're gonna go over here and look up to uh, Banner Peak which is one of the peaks I've known for a long time. You see it from Mammoth, Banner, Ritter, and uh, the minarets, they're, they're quite iconic. But it's, um, we're on the home stretch and it's been phenomenal. Kind of emotional too. So you can see that we got a lot of climbing to do today. Again. <laughs> But after eight miles of climbing, and it's all downhill the rest of the day and the rest of the trip, so it's kind of cool that uh, we get to cruise into the finish line. Well, me anyways. As I got to Thousand Island Lake, I began to think about how quickly the Sierras went. It, you spend so much time in the desert, long miles, long dry stretches, and still beautiful, but a different kind of beauty. And coming to the Sierras, it's just jaw-dropping. Every single day, there's something gorgeous. And it's, it's so different to the terrain where I live in, in Australia, that uh, I just wanted to savor as much of it as I could in these last couple days. Thousand Island Lakes. This guy's pretty relaxed, having a nice view. You can see it's gorgeous little valley with this lake with lots of fish in it. But, um, got one last climb. This is the last summit, Donahue Summit. We should be over it before lunchtime. And then it's all downhill the rest of the day and a little cruisy four mile stretch in the morning. And this adventure will be finished. But uh, I mean, how could you not resist? Sleeping wombat, just resting, checking out the view. Look at him. Look at this guy. He's so relaxed. That's what you call Uber chill. Anyhow, it's been a great adventure. I'm glad you guys have been part of it. Uh, thanks for the encouragement. With some tough days and some great days. All in all, it's been something pretty spectacular. Anyhow, I will report back tomorrow morning in that final stretch. Have a great day. Well, like every adventure, sooner or later you're bound to get some really bad weather. Okay. 
Julia Bean. I finally got to the Yosemite Valley region. Um, everything was soaked. It was still raining. I had to make camp and try and dry everything out. Last day on the trail today. Feeling a little bit sad. What a beautiful spot. Good morning, day 57. This is the last day. We've only got a couple miles to go. Finish this thing up. Just wander into the forest here in Yosemite. It's quite beautiful. It's pretty chilly, a little steam on the water. Fish are jumping. People with poles are gonna catch fish. Maybe the bears will too. Anyhow, it's been an incredible journey. I'm glad it's coming to an end, but I enjoyed almost every minute. The hail yesterday and the rain was not enjoyable. I'll say that is a, is a, a definite no fun. A lot of my stuff is still wet. Shoes are still wet, but not far to go. Anyhow, thank you all for uh, coming along the journey. And I hope it's brought some inspiration to some of you to get out there into the woods and see some things. The sun's about to rise. Look over at this valley. A bit of frost all around. It's gonna be a beautiful day. I hope you have one too. Bye for now. On this last little bit of trek, I was taking my time trying to enjoy the last little bits of this beautiful area. And I kind of wish I could spend a little bit more time here, but it was definitely time to get home. Getting to the uh, general store at Tuolumne Meadows, I had a, a good friend of mine, Terry, come from Mammoth to pick me up. And there my brother was coming from San Diego. And we were going to spend a couple days in Mammoth, just hanging out and relaxing and heading back down to I would uh, spend a few more days in Southern California before heading home. You would think that uh, after arriving in Mammoth I would be satisfied with with the walk I'd done, but now that I had my brother with me I wanted to take him up to Mammoth Rock on a little hike and give him an overview of where I used to live and the things I experienced and the place that brought me so much joy and set the inspiration for doing this walk in the first place. I'm deeply grateful that uh, I was able to, to do it and I sincerely thank everyone who came along for the journey.